what I really love about the fearful of what is they can be intuitive, they can be fun, they can be lively and have a lot of passion with their relationships. But if they haven't dealt with their emotions or haven't healed some of the things that they needed to heal before getting into their relationship, that relationship can become very unhealthy really fast. So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys six signs that are fearful avoidant. If you're the fearful avoidant or if you're dating the fearful avoidant, six signs that they're healing. Thank you for sticking around. If this is your first time viewing me, do me a favor and smash that like button, right? I really get help when you guys like my channel. When you guys subscribe, when you are liking me as a person almost. So thank you for being here and thank you for continuing to find my content valuable. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys six signs that a fearful avoidant is becoming more secure. Now, the journey for an avoidant person is probably the most hardest because they have the furthest to go as far as understanding themselves, as far as acceptance and a whole host of, a host of other uh, issues that they deal with as far as uh, you know, those limiting beliefs, those subconscious programmings that they have to actually reprogram. So in today's video, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to give you guys those six signs. And the very first thing is they'll have fewer ants when they are triggered. So what ants are is automatic negative thoughts. So when they're in a situation where they're feeling triggered, they won't go to doom and gloom right away. They'll be able to pause and actually sort through what the issue is instead of going right away to that negative thought. So, for example, if you're someone who is always in communication with someone and then all of a sudden they stop communicating for one day, you know, you won't go to this whole, oh, they must be cheating or they must, you know, must be breaking up with me. They must have lost interest in me. So that's something that's an automatic negative thought when a person has repeatedly had patterns because fearful avoidance, one thing about them is they pick up on people's vibes. They're able to pick up on people's patterns, people's the way that people show up. So when a person starts to pull away, they automatically go to, all right, this is the protective mechanism that I'm going to use, which is cutting them off, going to the worst case scenario so that I protect myself and my feelings so I don't have to invest more. And at the end of the day, they also feel like this is going to already happen. When a person is healing as a fearful avoidant, they won't automatically go there. Number two, their fearful avoidant reaction times become a lot longer than what they used to do in the past. So they won't go to that automatic negative thought like we talked about before. So they won't be, they'll be more responsive instead of reactive. Let's say, for example, a person says something to you while you're on a date or, you know, someone that you've been seeing says something to you that's a trigger for you. You know, I call them trauma landmines that steps on one of those trauma landmines that something someone done in a, had done in the past or some type of subconscious programming that you have about what this person's this belief, your subconscious programming belief that you have about what someone does and what it means to you. So if you're dating someone and they, they, they do something that steps on that trauma landmine, let's say that they, uh, they, they, they say something about your outfit or your wardrobe. And in the past, when someone said something about your wardrobe, this can go way back into childhood. You felt you know, ashamed. You felt like you don't have good taste in clothes. And that person does it in the relationship that you're in. If you're able to stop yourself and say, all right, let's see where this person's coming from. Are they trying to hurt my, my feelings? Are they trying to give me good feedback? Are they trying to you know, cut me down? I don't know, where is this coming from? So instead of just snapping on them right away, the stress or the insecurity starts to pop up, but you're able to pause and take a step back and say, all right, let's see where this person's coming from. And then ask more questions about, wait, what, what do you think about this? You don't like the shirt? Do you not like the so-and-so? -so? Do you think this go together? You'll be able to do that because you're so much more under control when you are starting to heal your fearful avoidance. The old version of you may have gone off on this person as soon as they said something about your clothes or may have snapped like that. But when you're starting to heal, you're not that volatile anymore. You're able to be more under control and be, like I said, responsive instead of reactive. The third sign that you're healing is that you're able to 
have healthier expressions of your feelings, you know, AKA better communication, which means when you are having discussions with your partner or you're, you're starting to feel some type of way about something that's happening in that relationship, you're able to come to the table in a way that's not as explosive or not as volatile as you used to do in the past. Now I know most of the time, this is some of the ways that you have learned how to come to the table where you just kind of bottle it up, bottle it up, and then all of a sudden you explode. But once you become more secure, you're able to see where the other person is coming from and you actually want their input. Let's say that someone you were dating, you know, you guys were in communication every single day and all of a sudden they pull back. Let's say that they have family coming to town. Let's say that they're more preoccupied with the person that's in their life at the moment. You know, their family, their friends, whatever. Let's say they, they had a girl's night out or guy's night out, whatever. Instead of exploding on them and thinking, all right, this person is out cheating, this person is out doing X, Y, Z, you're able to communicate that with them and say, hey, when you disappear on me like this, it makes me not feel like I'm valuable. It makes me feel like I'm not a priority in your life. And what I would enjoy is if you can, you know, reach out to me, not go so long without communication because it makes me feel like I'm left out. This is an example that I have. I have a client of mine who is in a relationship with someone and all of a sudden this person that they've been seeing for a while stopped being intimate with them. And instead of my client trying to come to the table and talk about why this has declined and why this person doesn't want to be intimate with them anymore, they protested silently. They said, okay, well, you know, not tonight then. But then the next day they go out and they just go out and just have dinner by themselves. They try to make the other person think that they're going out on a date or they're going out and doing something malicious. But that wasn't the case. She didn't even realize that she was doing this. It was a subconscious thing. It was something that she had so deeply ingrained that she didn't even understand why she felt the need to just go out and not tell the person where she was going. But once she started to realize that, hey, I'm doing that thing again, I'm starting to subconsciously protest and, and kind of spark a little bit of jealousy in my boyfriend's mind. Over time, what she learned how to do was whenever she felt rejected or whenever she felt like this person wasn't giving her enough, she was able to come to the table and tell him just how deeply that rejection felt to her. Even though she was rolling with the punches and going with the flow, she really wanted to have a deeper discussion. Just her tweaking that alone actually fixed things because she was going to start checking out. She was going to start checking out her relationship and not even telling him that she didn't want this anymore because she never communicated in a healthy manner. The fourth thing that you will see is you'll see an improved self-esteem or a level of self-worth. And what that looks like for me is that you're able to lay boundaries and able to communicate in a healthy way as far as letting your partner know what your standards are, what your deal breakers are, and what your boundaries are. And this can be in any area of your life, career life, it can be in your relationship, it can even be the relationships that you have with your friends and your family. Once your self-worth starts to go up, you'll know it. You'll stop tolerating a lot of the things that you tolerated in the past. And the fifth sign that you're healing as a fearful avoidant is you'll start accepting people wholeheartedly for who they are. A big reason why fearful avoidants struggle in relationships is because they can't trust people and they can't accept people for who they are. They start to find the flaws in that person and become ambivalent about the relationship from those, those flaws that they find. So when you get to the level of healing where you completely accept a person for who they are and where they're at right now in their journey, now they may have, we're not perfect people, they may have issues that need a little bit of work, but if it's not a deal breaker, it's something that you can work through. And I think that's what a lot of people who are fearful of avoiding struggle with is they don't know what their deal breakers are because they tolerate a lot of things compared to their bugaboos or things that could be built upon. So when you get to that point of being able to, you know, understand the fundamental differences between those things and you accept them for the flaws that they have in that, in that moment of their life, then you know you're becoming more secure. And the sixth one is you become less ambivalent during the major relationship milestones or thresholds, meaning the moving in together, the getting engaged, the meeting the families, the marriage, 
you know, any of those things that level up the relationship to the next level, you become less ambivalent about it, which means you're totally trusting, you're totally comfortable moving forward and proceeding with those things. So if you found this video any value, please like, comment, and share. Reach out to me on my other social media accounts, Twitter, is I am Coach Court, Instagram, I am Coach Court, and Facebook is Coach Court. Thank you guys, and always remember, when you go be love, you'll never have to find it. Namaste.